Rachel, what time are you done with work? I want you back now. Hey Maria, I haven't heard from you in a while. I can't leave now, I'll be finished with everything by around 6. Do you need help with something? What do you mean you can't leave now? Whatever you're doing right now is not that important, right? Can't you come home early? That's why I told Thomas you shouldn't marry a girl who works. She won't be there when you need her. How long are you planning to make me wait outside? It's cold and it's going to rain soon. Um, if you don't mind me asking. Where are you right now? I am at your doorstep. This door is not going to open itself. At our doorstep? Why so suddenly? Nobody told me that you're coming over today. I'm going to live with you two starting today. So hurry up and come home. I need you to open the door. I also need you to carry my luggage upstairs. Hold on, I'm going to need time to process this. Why are you going to live with us? I came to live with my son. What's to explain? I'm sure Thomas wants to live with me too. That's why I'm moving in. Moving in? What happened at the place you were living in? I thought you were staying with Katie and her husband. Do they know about this? I was staying at their house. But I had a change of mind and decided to move out myself. I have always been closer to Thomas anyway. I'm choosing my son over my daughter. You don't have kids. You wouldn't understand what a mother thinks. No, I don't understand. I don't see a reason why you would move out. I thought you were doing well with Katie and her husband. And did you talk to Thomas already? What did he say? Thomas is a busy man. I can't just ask him to come home now. That's why I'm asking you. It's your responsibility as a wife to take care of your mother-in-law. No, that was not what I meant. I'm asking if you have talked to Thomas already about you moving in with us. I think he would tell me if something big like this was going to happen. I probably told him a while back. But as I said, he is a busy man. He probably forgot about it already. He doesn't need to tell you everything. We talk every day. It probably would have come up if you had asked him. And when you talked to him about it, what did he say? I don't remember exactly what he said. We had that conversation a while back. But I'm sure he didn't refuse me. I'm his mother. Of course he wants to live with me. Thomas has always been a mommy's boy. He clung to me when I was doing chores, and he wouldn't let me out of his sight. Do you know what he said when he was five years old? He said he wanted to marry his mommy. Wasn't that cute? That was cute, for a five-year-old. Well, I can't marry him, that's for sure. But I can live with him. We can go back to the old days where he needed his mommy for everything. That was when he was still a child. Thomas is an adult now. I'm sure he has outgrown needing his mother for everything. Plus, he has me. As if you know him better than his mother does. And what are you good for? Thomas needs me. I'm sure he'll agree with me moving in. Anyway, I'm in the middle of work, so I can't go home right now. Maybe you can wait inside a coffee shop. There's a very nice cafe just down the road from our house. Or you can go shopping. Thomas said you like shoes, right? There's a mall 10 minutes away. I'm pretty sure they even have a place where you can put your luggage. I'll contact Thomas for you. He just finished a big project yesterday so he should have a light workload today. Maybe he can meet up with you early. What kind of daughter-in-law are you? People usually put their parents first. But you're choosing work over me. How could you just tell me to wait inside a cafe? I can't believe you're this kind of woman. Do you make Thomas do everything for you? I'm so sorry, but I really can't go home early today. My team is working on a presentation for tomorrow. 
It's my responsibility to watch over them as the team leader. I can't just leave them. Don't you guys have a spare key somewhere? Some people hide an extra key under the doormat, inside the mailbox, or in a potted plant or something. You know, for times like this. Yeah, but we don't do that. We only have two keys, one for each of us. So please find a place to wait until Thomas or I get home. I promise we'll go home as soon as we get off work. I'll tell you when one of us does. I guess it can't be helped. You're really going to leave an elderly woman in the rain. I'm sorry, I'll do my best to go home on time. A few minutes later. Hey Thomas, I'm sorry to bother you at work. Do you have a minute to talk? Sure, what's up? You don't usually message me during this time of the day. Your mother just messaged me. She is at our house and she wants me to go home and open the door for her. She told me that she's moving in with us. That was really out of the blue. She said she talked to you about this. Did you hear anything from her? What? My mom? She never said anything about moving in with us. I thought she was enjoying herself at Katie's place. Katie didn't say anything about mom moving out of her house either. Your mom wanted me to leave work immediately to open the door for her. But I told you yesterday that my team has a presentation tomorrow. So I can't leave right now. I told her to wait inside a cafe or somewhere until one of us gets home. Let's just say that she's not very happy about it. What should we do? Got it. No need to say more. I'm pretty much done with everything I have to do today, so I'll go home now. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. Are you sure? Your boss is not going to say anything. I'm sure. I just finished helping him with a big project. He can give me a half day off. I'm sorry, it seems like my mother is causing you trouble again. No, it's okay. She's her mother. She is kind of my responsibility too. I'll leave her in your hands then. I'll message her that you'll be home soon. Two weeks later. Rachel, are you still working right now? When are you coming home? I'm getting a little hungry here. I have a set schedule, so I'll get home around the same time as I do every day. Is that right? Then it looks like I won't be making dinner anytime soon. Can't you be a little more considerate? I'm old. I need to eat when I need to eat. I'll apologize for that, but may I ask you to do me a favor? Can you stop messaging me in the middle of the day and asking me when I'll be home? You've been doing that every day, but since I've told you my schedule already, I don't think you need to ask every time. What? Is it getting bothersome for you? I am showing concern for you. What's wrong with that? I live in this house too you know. I just want to know when you'll get home. I go home at the same time every day. I just thought maybe you would have remembered it by now. I'm old. I don't remember trivial things like that. And it doesn't take up much of your time answering right. Please only message me during work hours when you have something you want me to do. If I have to stop my work at hand to answer messages, then I'll have to work overtime to get things done. And that means I'll get home even later than I do right now. What a cold-hearted daughter-in-law you are. Fine, I'll only message you when I need you to do something. I do have something for you to do right now. I'm in the mood for some lobsters. I saw them on TV this morning. Then I realized I haven't had them in a while. Make that our dinner menu for tonight. You want lobsters for dinner? Pick some up at the supermarket on the way home. You need to make sure that they are fresh. Or even better, grab some takeout from a seafood restaurant. I'm sure there are a couple of restaurants nearby here that you can call and order ahead. Make sure you calculate the distance and time when you're ordering. That way, the food will still be hot when you get home. If I do that, then I'll get home even later. Then why don't you take a couple of hours off and leave work now? 
I can't tell my boss that I want to go home now because I have to go buy lobsters for dinner. Lol, why would you tell your boss that? You're such a weird girl. Think with your head. You don't have to be so honest it doesn't get you far. Just tell your boss that you have something urgent to take care of. He doesn't need to know what it is. Yeah, no, I can't do that. I'm really busy today. I have work that I need to finish before the end of the day. I can't leave early when everyone around me is working hard. If you have the time right now, why don't you call for delivery? That's too much trouble. Why do I have to be the one making the call? You're my daughter-in-law. You should be helping me. Are you saying that you don't want to listen to my needs? I'm not saying that. I want to help, but I really can't today. How about you ask Thomas? I know there's a really good seafood restaurant right next to the building he works in. Are you telling me to ask my son, a working man, to pick up takeout? What are you thinking? Is this what you usually make him do at home? Don't make my Thomas do something so embarrassing. What do you mean by embarrassing? Is just picking up takeout. Thomas does it all the time when he's in the mood for something we can't make at home. There's nothing wrong with that. These days, men can pick up food for the family. Even so, I won't let Thomas do it. I don't care what the world or you think. In our family, men don't do chores like this. Things like cleaning and shopping are always done by us women. Oh, is that so? Well then, if you really want lobsters, please wait until I get home. You see, this is why I told Thomas that he shouldn't marry a working girl. There's no one to do the chores. Oh, and speaking of which, there's one more thing I need to tell you. What is it? Did your mother teach you how to clean? Because she didn't do a good job. There's this thin layer of dust in the corner of the bathroom. And they're under the beds and cabinets. I know you're working and busy and all. But you should at least do the chores like a good wife does. I'm sorry for that. I'll take care of it as soon as I get home. I'll do my best next time. And the fridge is almost empty. All you have left is some ice cream and a couple of bottles of beer. Do you know how hard I had to search the house before I found the snack drawer? You should have at least prepared my lunch for the day. Thomas and I do grocery shopping on the weekends. We'll get food tomorrow, and both of our companies have cafeterias. And sometimes we go out to lunch with our co-workers. We don't take lunch to work so we never prepare anything. I'm sorry, is it possible for you to make your own lunch? Thomas and I will buy extra vegetables and meat tomorrow. You can make a list of the things you want to eat and we'll get them for you. You're making me do chores. Why would I need to do that when I have you? The sole purpose of having a daughter-in-law is so that you have someone to do the chores for you. You're making me cook now. Are you thinking of making me clean the house in the future? This is madness. Does Thomas know you're making me do this? That's not what I meant. Well if so, making lunch for me is not that hard, right? You just need to get up earlier. Katie made lunch for me when I was living with her. Why can't you do the same? Katie doesn't work. She has the time to do cleaning and cooking around the house. She made me lunch even if she had to go out for the day. It's the least she could have done as my daughter. Okay, I understand. From now on, I'll make your lunch before I leave for work. It isn't something I should need to tell you. It was something you should have been doing from the beginning. Remember to bring the lobster dinner home on your way back tonight. Fine, I will. Six months later. Rachel, how's your trip to Italy? Are you having fun? I'm so jealous of you. Going on a trip all by yourself. Leaving your husband and mother-in-law home. And of all places, to Europe. It was a trip planned by my company. And I didn't go by myself.
My colleagues are with me as well. It was a reward for our hard work in the past year. The company didn't force you to go, did it? You should have refused and stayed home to take care of your family. This is one of the perks for working at my company. It's not like they'll give me cash if I don't go. And Thomas said I should go. It's always nice to give yourself a break. That's why I didn't refuse. I thought you didn't have a problem with it either. Well, Thomas should have stopped you. What's a woman doing on a trip without her husband? By the way, when are you coming back? The day after tomorrow. Oh, that's earlier than I expected. I guess you only have until then to enjoy yourself. What do you mean? Oh, it's nothing you have to worry about. I'm having a great time with just Thomas and me. You don't have to worry about us. It's been a while since you and Thomas spent quality time as mother and son. I'm happy for you. I know, and without you in between us, it's like we're back to the old days. I've been making food for Thomas every day. I made everything he liked as a kid since you never made him anything nice to eat. And Thomas, my sweet boy, complimented all my cooking. He said everything was delicious. It made me so happy. I can do this every day. That's really nice. I think Thomas missed your cooking. And unlike you, I did all the cleaning and washing in the house. You usually take everything to the laundromat, right? What a waste of money. I hand washed and ironed all of his shirts and pants. Everything looks as good as new. I guess you won't understand. But it's what a wife should have done for her husband instead of going on vacation by herself. I guess so. If I didn't have a job, I would have more time to do these things. I would be able to cook and clean and everything. But when Thomas and I got married, we agreed on splitting the chores and helping each other out. I think that worked out really well for us. You're just making excuses by saying you have to work. But you didn't want to do any of this in your heart. That's why the house was such a mess. I don't get how Thomas was able to endure all of your shortcomings. You don't do anything well around the house. Maybe I can convince them to divorce you before you come back. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, you can certainly try. I don't think Thomas will do something like that to me just because you told him to. You're so sure of yourself. Do you think he'll choose you over his mother? I'll do as I please, as you said. Oh, look at the time. I've said too much. I have to make dinner for Thomas now. It's going to be beef stew, his favorite. Have fun for the rest of your trip. I will. I'll bring home some souvenirs. Please take care of Thomas for me as well. Two days later. Rachel, today is the day you come home from Italy, right? That's right. We just got on the bus to the airport. You should go straight home after you land. Thomas and I moved while you were away. It was a hurry decision, so all of his stuff is still in the house. Be a dear and mail him over, okay? I know you are going to be lonely without us but try and hang in there haha. -ha. What? As I said, Thomas and I moved out. We found a nice little place for just the two of us. You won't see us by the time you get home. I'm giving you a heads up here. What do you mean? How are you not understanding this? I just explained it to you in plain English. You haven't even gotten on the plane yet. Are you already feeling lightheaded from jet lag? Or did you forget your mother tongue from just a few days abroad? I didn't forget anything. I understood every word you said. I know what moved means. I'm asking why you moved. I was only gone for a week, and Thomas didn't say anything about us moving. You said to do as I please, right? So I did. I started looking for a new place as soon as I could, and I found one right away. 
I showed it to Thomas, and he likes it too. He said it would be a good place for us. What else did he say? You two are getting a divorce, so the rest is none of your business. Thomas is going to live with me from now. He's just going to get your signature on the divorce documents, and then that'll be it. A divorce? I was on the phone with him last night. Thomas said nothing about a divorce. Is this something he told you, or did you just assume it? Well, I don't have to assume anything. He's going to live with me, so of course he's going to divorce you. But he should have told you earlier. It was not very kind of him to get a divorce without informing you. Ha <laughs> ha. As his mother, I have to take responsibility for his actions. I have to compliment him for making this decision. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, well I think I've heard enough about this from you for now. I'm going to contact Thomas and ask him about this myself. I just thought it would be easier for you to take in the information if I told you instead of Thomas. But please, go ask him all you want. Ha <laughs> ha. A few minutes later. Thomas, explain to me what your mother meant by divorce. Hey, I was just about to ask you if you're at the airport already. What do you mean by divorce? Who's getting a divorce? Me and you. Are you kidding? Why are we getting a divorce? Did you meet someone in Italy or something? Ha <laughs> ha. No, I didn't. I got a message from your mom. I thought her attitude was improving recently but... Then she tells me that you guys found another house and moved out while I was away. And she said you agreed on getting a divorce. What? Of course I didn't believe her but I thought maybe you could clue me in on exactly what's going on. Well there is a little bit of truth in what my mother said. She moved away. But I'm not going with her. We're going to go back to the way things were before she came to live with us. We're not getting a divorce. We're going back to just you and me. What? What exactly happened while I was away? Mom moved from Katie's house half a year ago, right? I called Katie then to find out what happened. She said that Mom didn't help with any chores around the house even though she was home all the time. Mom kept complaining about everything and ordered her around. And Mom was rude to Max too. She never liked Max as a husband for Katie, saying he doesn't make enough money. That must have been tough for them. And then what? Katie was thinking about finding a new place for Mom. That was when Mom packed her bags and came to live with us. Katie was worried at first because Mom didn't tell her where she was going. But she never thought that Mom would have come to our place. She was really surprised when I told her. Wow, so that was what happened. I'm the oldest child, so I always thought I would have to take care of our mother later in life. That's the reason why I didn't send her packing when she showed up all of a sudden. I thought if she didn't cause any trouble like at Katie's house, maybe we could give her a shot. But I'm sorry that wasn't the case. Well, I can't deny that fact. I figured she was just still a bit uncomfortable around me or something. I thought maybe things would get better between us this time. I know you've been enduring her all this time, even if you never said any bad things about her to me. I didn't know anything up until now. But my mom was kind of rude to you even in front of me sometimes. I couldn't imagine what she did or said to you in private. I couldn't let her do this to you anymore, so I came up with a plan. A plan? What kind of plan? I got Katie to help me out. I asked her to give Mom a pamphlet saying that it was a great apartment. Then when Mom showed it to me, I told her that I'd move in too. But that's not going to happen. Oh gosh, so you lied to her. That's why she thought you two would be living together. Where did she move to? Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you that part. It's a place for elderly people. It's kind of like a nursing home, but without the nurses. It's for people who are mom's age. They each get their own room, but they share a lot of space too. It's a place for older people who are alone but can take care of themselves. They have some recreation facilities, and residents watch over each other. Mom will be fine there. 
That sounds like a dorm. It's common for young people to share a house, but I've never seen something like that for the elderly. I didn't know about it either until recently. One of my co-workers said that his dad is living in one of those homes, so I asked him for more details. I thought it would be perfect for mom since she's so healthy and needs company. So I looked up the number and gave the place a call. And they had an opening. Well good timing haha. -ha. Wow, that was really lucky. But are you sure your mom will be okay there? I thought about it too. But mom doesn't have any serious health problems. And I got some of the residents phone number so they could give me a call if anything happened. Mom liked the place when we were touring it. She was ready to pack her bags right away and move in that day haha. -ha. Okay, so I got why she thought that you would move in with her. But why did you think that we were going to get a divorce? Oh, that. I probably just nodded and changed the subject when she brought that up. And she took that as a firm yes by mistake. I'm sorry that I made you wait this long. I know it's been hard for you since mom moved in. And I even made you anxious with this whole divorce misunderstanding. I want to apologize. Will you forgive me? No, don't say that. She's your mom. I know it was hard for you to make a decision like this. And at the same time, you were also thinking of me. I'm really happy that you're so considerate of me. Of course, you're my wife. We're still going to have to see her now and then of course. But there's no need for us to take care of her. We can enjoy life with just you and me again. Okay, I love you. I love you too, and I'm hoping for some really good souvenirs. I will have some time at the airport before boarding. I'll choose something from the shops. Have a safe flight. The next day. Are you back in the country? Yes, thanks for asking. As you suggested, I went home as soon as I landed. Thomas was waiting for me. Did you now? Both Thomas and you tricked me into moving out. How could you be so happy? I am happy but I didn't do anything. Thomas did what he thought was needed. He told me afterward, he was being considerate of me. Well, Thomas has always been considerate of other people since he was a child. I wish she could have shared some of that consideration with me. But it's okay, I don't mind. I found a really comfortable place. I can still live an enjoyable life without Thomas. And I'm so much happier without you. I hope you guys won't regret this. Thomas is going to miss my cooking. We won't, and I'm also happy because I can finally enjoy my life with my husband peacefully without being hassled all of the time. Things will finally get back to the way they were before. Okay, you don't need to celebrate so much. Why did Thomas have to choose someone like you to be his wife? And Katie's husband is also good for nothing. Katie was pretty and smart, but she didn't have an eye for men. I guess none of the people in our family had any luck in our lives. I don't think so, at least, you're very lucky. Thomas and Katie grew up to be very fine adults. They are kind and gentle and they always think of others. You don't know my children as well as I do. If they were kind and gentle, then they wouldn't have thrown their mother into a nursing home. It's not a nursing home. Thomas did research before he took you there. And while we're talking can I ask you one question? Why did you never like me? That's because you don't listen to what I say. You're like Katie. She married that good-for-nothing man even though I strongly opposed it. And you didn't even come to look for me when I moved out of their house. Uh, I'm so upset with all of you. What Katie did had nothing to do with me. As if I care, and you won't understand. Ordering your daughter-in-law around the house and pointing out their mistakes is like the most entertaining hobby for every mother out there. But Thomas always took your side over mine. I was the one who raised those two. But neither of them listened to me. They have no love for their mother. 
You don't understand him even though you're their mother. Thomas told me that because he is the oldest child, it's his responsibility to take care of you in the future. And Katie didn't go look for you when you moved out because Thomas told her you were at our house. She gave us a list of the things that you like and don't like. Both Thomas and Katie care about you deeply. What? When you first moved in with Katie and Max, they had just got married. No married couple would have wanted to live with their parents, but they still took you in and took care of you. They did everything they could to give you a comfortable life. How can you say that they don't love you? Well, when you put it that way, they did do a lot of things for me. But Katie is not that good at doing chores and cooking. She probably took me in so I could help her with that. But didn't you brag to me that Katie made you lunch every day, even when she had to go out? She may not be good at it, but she was trying. And she's still trying. She messages me all the time about things like how to make certain food and how to separate the clothes for laundry. Did you ever help Katie with her chores, or did you just complain about everything she did wrong? Well, I'm old. There are things I can't do anymore. And I just heard something from Thomas. He said that he and Katie split the cost of you moving into the new place. I thought you paid for yourself, but you gave the bill to Katie and Thomas. How could you do this to your own children? They're my children. They're obligated to take care of me. And plus, I don't have enough savings to pay for a place like this. You guys were the ones who wanted me to move, so of course you'll have to pay for it. I was going to ask you guys to pay for the electricity bill too. I think Thomas and Katie have done enough to pay you back for all those years. You don't deserve them. This is not the way you talk to your mother. You're Thomas's mother, but not mine. Thank goodness. I think I would have emancipated myself if you were my mother. I wouldn't want anything to do with someone like you if you are not Thomas's mom. But I do want to thank you for raising Thomas into a wonderful man. I could never have found such a wonderful man to marry without your help. Why does everyone around me hate me? I have no one by my side. And children who kick their mother out of the house. I feel very sad for you. You don't feel the love and gratitude from your children. That's really sad. If you keep acting the way you have been, then for sure you'll have no one by your side one day. Shut up. I don't want to listen to you anymore. I'm going to live by myself. Leave me alone. Fine, do whatever you want. I don't want to deal with you anymore. I wish you the best. Live however you like. But let me give you a final word. Do not rely on Thomas and Katie anymore. They have their own lives. You got me. After that. For a while, Maria lived happily with her new friends at the old folks' home. But she got lonely very quickly because Thomas and Katie rarely visit her. She called Katie and messaged Thomas several times. Thomas didn't want me to stress over it again, so he didn't tell me what she wanted. It is the children's responsibility to take care of their parents, there's no doubt about that. But the parent should also appreciate their help. This feeling has to be mutual. As Maria's daughter-in-law, I wanted to help her out as well, but she was too difficult to live with. I don't know what will happen in the future. I know eventually, we'll have to take care of her again. But for now, I want to enjoy my life with Thomas, with just the two of us.